G'day and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another one of my EV Realist videos in which I seek to inject a note of sanity into the mad dash for EVs and net zero currently being spruced by our governments. So if you like this kind of content, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to enable all notifications so you never miss another video. In this episode, we're going to look at the absolute farce of electric buses. Nobody in their right mind would have thought to try powering buses with batteries if it weren't for the total insanity of net zero. Net zero is essentially environmental extremism, an all or nothing approach to what might be a non-problem, but that's another story. There's never been any serious cost-benefit analysis of net zero because it would show overwhelmingly that the benefits are essentially zero and the costs are astronomical. China and India are going to continue burning coal for decades and decades to come, but the West will try and reduce its emissions to zero in order to, quote, save the planet. Of course, it will make no difference to the planet, which doesn't need saving. I mean, it's been here for four and a half billion years after all, but will impoverish the population's concern beyond belief. It's all driven entirely by a rigid ideology without a smidgen of practicality. Instead of heading at breakneck speed over the inevitable cliff of net zero, we could make incremental improvements like phasing in natural gas vehicles instead of diesel. Oh no, we can't use gas, they wail. That's a fossil fuel. Despite the fact that natural gas gas produces far fewer emissions, it's still frowned upon by the net zero zealots. So we're forced to resort to the insanity of electric buses with predictably hilarious results. This from the Edmonton Journal. More than half of Edmonton's $60 million electric bus fleet not roadworthy. A more than $60 million transformational effort to move to electric buses in Edmonton is stalled at the curb. Just 6% of the Edmonton Transit System's 1,000 bus fleet are electric buses, but those are very squeaky wheels. Three quarters of the city's 60 bus electric fleet is in the garage with poor immediate prospects for parts to fix them. Proterra, the American company the city purchased the electric buses from between 2019 and 2022, is in Chapter 11 filing for bankruptcy protection. Edmonton's on a list of creditors seeking $1.3 million and fulfilment of service and warranties. Still touted online as super efficient and efficient financially, the buses aren't currently living up to expectations. Even if a battery powering an electric motor means less maintenance for 20 years, if you can't keep that bus on the road for other parts around the battery, then you can't call that bus efficient, Bradshaw said. It takes a diesel-powered onboard heater to keep the body of the bus warm. And despite $200,000 in special blankets to keep all those batteries toasty, the Proterra buses are still feeling that northern Alberta chill in their skimpy range. Some electric bikes can go farther on a charge than an ETS electric bus. While the website touts mileage up to 340 kilometers on a charge, on Edmonton streets the stylish bus is a sluggish employee. It has a range of up to 117 kilometers, which gets it on the streets from 5 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. before it has to hit the charger and then gets back out from 2.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. The wheels on a diesel ETS bus can go round and round all day. Out at 4.30 a.m. to pick up commuters all day, the workhorse can get home in the stable at 1.30 a.m. without ever tanking up, Bradshaw said. So not only are there no parts to repair these buses, but their range is terrible. And if you think this is a one-off, just think again. This from the city of Jackson, Wyoming. In hindsight, broken electric bus is not the best choice for Jackson. You don't say. A former Teton County commissioner told Fox News that in hindsight, Wyoming's richest county should have bought natural gas-powered buses instead of the electric fleet that has recently broken down. Absolutely, they should have bought gas-powered buses. A former Teton County commissioner told Fox News that Wyoming's richest county should have bought natural gas-powered buses instead of the electric fleet that has recently broken down. Eight electric buses have broken down and are in need of parts, Paul Vogelheim told Fox News commentator Jesse Waters at his Sept 29th segment. The report was responding to a Cowboy State Daily story that reported on the new inoperable electric buses. It's the way that we're kind of operating these days. We're looking for that shiny bright object. We all got to go with zero emissions from battery powered buses, said Vogelheim. It's kind of sad because we're sitting next to a county that has the largest field of natural gas. Of course, the logical step would be to move to natural gas, but because of the blinkered binary nature of net zero, anything that's not renewable is prohibited, and so millions of dollars are wasted on this laughable electric nonsense. However, the one piece of good news is that because there's no subtlety in net zero, it's all or nothing, we can be fairly confident that it'll never happen. It's just how long it'll take our narrow-minded governments to work that out. 
Anyway, that's just about it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you've got any tips or stories, you can hit me up on Instagram or by email. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.